Hey folks, welcome to the St. Patrick's edition of the Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel. we got an exciting topic today, which is going to be spousal benefits on Social Security. Incredibly important for you to understand how this works. There's so much misinformation out there and just confusion, especially given the law change of 2015 that President Obama signed in. Um, it's bipartisan. There's Republican Congress, a Democratic president, and they, they actually signed it to increase the solvency of Social Security which actually is a pretty good thing, but it did lead to a lot of misconceptions and a lot of confusion. So we're going to tackle some of that here today. Uh, first, St. Patrick's Day, got my plaid tie on. I think that uh, if you have never read the story of St. Patrick, it's a wonderful story about how he was taken into slavery and still came back. And just, it's just a great, great story to read. It's not about drinking beer and playing the fiddle. It's, it's actually a very good Christian story that I think you should read. It's wonderful to know the history behind St. Patrick and what that guy went through and how he kept his faith and, uh, and just changed the world. I love it. So anyway, on to uh, <laughs> bigger and better things. On to uh, it, more interesting uh, things, maybe contemporary things. That's probably a better word. So what we're going to talk about today is we're going to use a fictitious couple, Bob and Jane, and we're going to use them in terms of their spousal benefits. And the premise is Bob worked full time for 35, 40 years. Jane stayed at home and raised the kids and whatnot. And you can change it any way you want. You can make Jane the primary earnings winner. You can make Bob stay. I don't care. Um, it's nothing to be offended by. We're just going to use this for simplicity. Bob and Jane. Bob worked. Jane stayed home. And, uh, and we're going to talk about how the benefits that and we'll see here in just a second can be attributed to both Bob, but most important, this topic is for Jane, her spousal benefit based on Bob's records, what we're gonna focus on here today. So let's start with um, a uh, web, uh, let me move myself out of the way here. And this is an article I took straight from the Social Security website, which I'll link the show notes below. Um, there's a link right there, but I will put it down there. The, the drawback about the Social Security website is that it's so heavily used uh, sometimes the pages lo load slowly, and when you're trying to do a, a video and record the pages lo loading slowly, it, it's not a very good user experience. So I just copied and pasted it into this Google Docs um, form here. And uh, But if you want to look at it directly, just click the show notes down there for the link. So first thing they say on spousal benefits, and this is, this is important, folks. I, I really don't think a lot of people realize this especially as they're planning for retirement. They might realize it after they go to Social Security, but as they're planning for retirement, do they are they aware of the benefits that they're rightly uh, entitled to? I'm not so sure. So let's make this clear. Even if you, and again, this is Jane we're talking about, even if you have never worked under Social Security, you may be eligible to get your spouse's retirement benefits if you are at least age 62 and your spouse is receiving benefits, ironically, and we'll, we'll save this one for a different episode, you can link to right there. Even if you are divorced, you still may able, be able to get benefits on your ex-spouse's record as well. We're going to save that for a different episode, but if you're divorced, you can still qualify for spousal benefits on your ex's record. Two caveats there. You've had to been married for at least 10 years. Okay. You had to been married. Well, three caveats. You've had to been married for at least 10 years, divorced for two, and you can't be remarried. So 10, two, and zero. 10 years you've had to been married, two years you've been divorced, and you cannot be remarried to claim on your ex spouse's benefits as a spousal benefit. And a lot of people didn't know that. I can't tell you how many clients I've dealt with. And I said, ah, you were married. You, know, you were married to a doc for over 10 years. The doc was making good money. You know, after your divorce settlement, uh, you know, maybe you don't feel you got enough out of it. Well, the one thing you can do as long as you're not remarried is go to Social Security and say, hey, I was you know, working at a nonprofit for 30,000 bucks a year answering the phones. You know, my husband was a radiologist making $500,000 a year. Certainly he has a higher benefit than I do. I'd like to receive part of my spousal benefits off his record. I you know, I can't say it's dozens, but I certainly have talked uh, women in particular. In fact, I think it's all been women, you know, divorcees. I said, look, you have been remarried. You need to go to Social Security Administration and get what's yours. Get half of his record. And they said they can do that. And I said, yes. And they go down there and they get a huge benefit increase. Enough. Actually, I'll never forget this one lady I had up in Pennsylvania. 
She wanted long-term care insurance, but wasn't sure how she was going to afford the $400 a month premium. So we did this whole thing. I said, go file on your ex-husband's record. And he wasn't a radiologist, but he was an emergency doc. You know, maximizing his social security benefit. I said, you go down there and get half of his, your full retirement age. And you and she made about another $500 a month, which she used to buy her long-term care. It's a wonderful concept that she was ignorant about. And unfortunately, uh, the good folks on socialsecurity.gov and the telephone did not tell her about it. So I said, she needed to get down there and talk to him in person. And lo and behold, she was right. And she got that money, was able to purchase long-term care coverage because she's very, very worried about her kids having to take care of her uh, if she ever became, uh, you know, destitute. And that was not what she wanted to happen. All right. So if you qualify and apply for your own retirement benefits and for benefits as a spouse, Social Security will always pay the higher, will always pay your benefits first, but they will pay the higher of your own benefits of your spousal's benefits. So they're going to look at your own benefits first. They're going to look at your spousal benefits and they're going to pay you the most of what those two benefits are. Again, folks, if you are divorced and you don't tell them you're divorced, they might not know to look at your ex-spouse's benefits. So you got to tell them that. Um, just be advised. If you don't tell them that, you know, they might not know. So you just got to say, you know, hey, I, I was divorced. I was married for over 10 years. I've been divorced. Now, here's the kicker. If you are between 62 and your full retirement age, the amount will be permanently reduced by a percentage based on a certain amount of percentage of what Social Security uses. We'll talk about that in just a second. Remember, though, your full retirement age, if you're born in 1954 or before, your full retirement age is 66. If you were born in 1960 and beyond, I was born in 1970. If you were born in 1960 and beyond, your full retirement age is 60, 70, uh, 67, 67. If you were born in 1955 to 1959, your full retirement age is 66 and some months. So between 66 and 67, just remember that. 54 before, 66, 60 and a, uh, born between uh, 1960 and beyond, full retirement age is 67. Anytime before that is between or anytime in between 55 and 1959 is 66 and some amount of months. Um, now, this is the critical thing when it comes to spousal benefits and divorce A. Now, where divorce A is still a spouse. So I'm just I'm going to stop using that term. Just remember, if this is applicable to you as a divorce A, this is still applicable to you as a spouse. At your full retirement age, remember, 1954 and before is 66. So we'll just say 66 here. Your benefit of a spouse cannot exceed one half of your spouse's full retirement amount. All right. One, it cannot be one half of your spouse's full retirement amount. Now, here's a critical thing that's only applicable for those born between before January 2nd, 1954. And I'm definitely going to post another video on this exclusively because if you are born January 3rd and beyond of 1954, no reason to watch. It won't affect you in the least because of the tax law, Social Security law that was signed by Obama in 2015. If you were born before January 2nd, 1954 and have already reached retirement age, full retirement age, you can choose to receive only your spouse's benefit and allow your own benefit to accumulate with delayed earnings credits. It's called a, uh, nah, drawn a blank, a restricted application was called. We're getting that restricted application. I'm not going to talk about it here right now because this, this video isn't for that. But just remember that if that's you, you're crazy not to consider what that restricted app application means. All right. So let's go down here. Um, oh, finally, if there's an ex-spouse who also qualifies for benefits, they will not affect the benefit the other spouse receives. So going back to this, the, the case up in Pennsylvania with one of my clients, when she received half of her ex-spouse's benefits, he did not know and it didn't affect him at all. He was completely ignorant of it. He didn't have to approve it. He did not know it, it didn't reduce his benefit in the least. So just keep that in mind. If you're a divorcee and you're thinking about filing on your ex's uh, primary insurance amount, his retirement benefit, he does not need to know. He will not be made aware and he won't need to approve it and it won't reduce his benefit. So don't don't worry about that. That's just the way it is, which is great. So let's go into use an example here of how this works. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, but, let me go. Yeah, okay. 
Bob and Jane. All right. So Bob is the primary worker. Jane was a stay at home mom. Bob was born 6-15-1952. Jane was born 6-15-1954. That means that Bob's full retirement is in 2018 in June. June of 2018 is when he will get his full Social Security benefit. And he wants to, ironically, he wants to retire that same time. He wants to retire the day he qualifies for his full retirement age at Social Security. Jane, because she doesn't work too, essentially is going to retire then as well. All right. So Jane and Bob are going to retire June 2018 when Bob turns 66, which means he will qualify for his full retirement benefit from Social Security. So let's step back just a tad. How did we calculate that? Well, remember this video here, we talked about the, uh, the average index monthly earnings, AIME. Bob's AIME was $4,059. Essentially, he averaged $48,000 a year in today's dollars for his last his, his 35 years of working career. So we take his AIME, we use the bend points that we have here, it means his benefit at full retirement age is 1819, $1,819.14. So because Bob is waiting until he's 66 at full retirement age, his benefit will be from SSA, Social Security Administration, $1,819.14. Just for the record, if Bob would have retired earlier, he would have been had his benefit reduced by 500 bucks. If he retired 25%, if he would have retired later, he would have had his benefit increase by 600 bucks or 32 percent but he has not he's retiring at 66 to get his full retirement amount now quiz what is 1819 for bob that's his pia his primary insurance amount and that's the critical portion of this because not only does pia affect bob but this pia is going to affect jane's benefit as well based on bob's record all right so now Jane is going to also retire when Bob does. And again, retire just means in this case, she's going to draw her social security benefit. So as a, as a, as a, a point of reference here, if Jane were to retire when she was 66, her benefit would be one half of that. Her benefit would be 909.57. If Jane were to retire at her full retirement age, at Jane's full retirement age of 66, cool. um, let's just say FRA, her benefit would be one half of Bob's primary insurance amount or full benefit, which would be $900. So between them, they're going to get about $2,700 a, a month in Social Security. $1,800 plus $900. Yeah, $2,700 a month, which means $32,000 a year in Social Security benefits. Not too shabby. But Jane is going to retire. Jane is going to file at 64, which is a two years earlier than her full retirement benefit, which means she will take a reduction in how much she gets. And thankfully, the Social Security Administration gives us a great little tool here that tells us how to calculate that. So enter your date of birth. Now we're talking about Jane. Jane enter your date of birth. And she's going to say is 06. We'll just say, what did I say? 15, 1954. And enter the date you would like to be. It didn't work. Huh? 0, 15. Okay. Hold on just a second, my friends. Fat fingering it here. Zero six fifth fifth nineteen fifty four. This is what I'm talking about. Sometimes the, the websites work pretty slowly here at the administration. Uh, a year for which you'd like to begin receiving benefits. And we're gonna say zero six nineteen fifty four. And then you hit compute, and it's gonna tell you that Jane. We'll say zero seven then. It's saying she has to get it the year after. Okay, so it's going to tell us that Jane would, if any of you like to begin receiving benefits, and here if you like to be, uh, 
month to year four, man. Okay. You'd like to begin receiving benefits. You must be at least 62. Your retirement year must be after. Uh, so it's going to tell her the benefit. Her re full retirement year is 2020. I'm not sure why it's not allowing us to do this here. Six, 1954. Oh, 2018. What am I talking about? 2000, there we go. 2018. All right. So saying 2020 is when Jane would have received her full retirement benefit. 2020, which again is half of Bob's record, the 909. But because she's taken it in 2018, She's not going to receive 50% of it. She's going to receive 41.67% because it's going to be reduced to her because she is taking early retirement benefits as well. So if we come back here, we're going to say Jane files at 64. Well, now we got to reduce the benefit because she's before her full retirement benefit equals this times point. 4167. So now her benefit is going to be $758. She's going to lose exact, almost exactly $150 a month from what her other benefit would have been if she waited two years. So you see how that works. Because Jane is not at full retirement age, she's at uh, below full retirement age, she will take a reduced benefit. If she wanted her max benefit, her max benefit will never be beyond 909 based on uh, Bob's record. She would have to wait till she's 66. Now, the interesting thing, folks, this amount is all that matters for Jane. It doesn't matter when Bob takes his benefit. Bob can take his benefit at 62, and Jane's record is still going to be this way. It's still going to be $909 if she waits till she's 66. And this is what's critically important, and so many people miss it. Bob can take early, Bob can take late, but when Jane hits 66, she needs to file for her spousal benefit regardless of what Bob is doing. I cannot stress this enough. If you don't learn anything else in this video, remember, when Jane, the spouse, hits her full retirement age, 66, she needs to file for her spousal benefits regardless of what Bob is doing. Jane needs to go down there and say, I am 66 or a full retirement age. I want to file for my spousal benefits. If Bob filed earlier, doesn't matter. If Bob filed later, it doesn't matter. This is the contingent number right there. Bob's PIA is all that matters for Jane. Nothing else matters. Please understand that. A lot of people say, well, Bob hasn't filed it. I don't care. If you are a full retirement age, go down to Social Security office and tell them you want to file for your spousal benefits because you've reached full retirement age. First thing they're going to do is pick up your spouse's, Bob, in this case, PIA, $1,819. And they're going to say, okay, because you've hit 66, your spousal benefits will be $900. I can't tell you how many people, and they don't, ah, they say, well, Bob hasn't taken his benefits yet. He's getting this delayed earnings credit, so I'm going to wait. I have to wait till he files. No, you don't. No, you don't. If you've hit your full retirement age as a spouse, go down there and file. Now, the reason why that's not very, it doesn't affect very many people because the vast majority of people mistakenly file for benefits at 62. Very, very few people wait till full retirement age and even if you were wait till, uh, 70, in this case, Bob, wait till 70 to file. So because of that, this mistake isn't made much in terms of a spouse delaying refiling for her benefit on her husband's record until he files. It just doesn't happen very often because most uh, Bobs in this case file at 62 to 63. They don't wait until they're 70. And that's a huge, huge mistake. All right. So now if Jane files at 64, Bob files at 66, they're going to get not uh, $2,700 a month. They're going to get 1819 plus 758, they're going to get 25, almost $2,600 a month. So not a significant reduction. The question is, is it worth Jane filing two years early to get an extra, you know, 150 bucks a month over the course of those two years? I, you know, I don't know. That's something you have to cash flow. You know, we can help you with that here at the Heritage Wealth Planning for sure. But at the end of the day, is it worth an extra 1800 bucks a year uh, to wait for uh, to file but remember that extra $150 a year is for the rest of your life, all right? So if you can defer taking your social security until you hit full retirement age, 
That's not just $1,800 a year for those two years. That's $1,800 a year the rest of your life that you're, you're letting go because the Social Security is going to permanently reduce your benefit. So if you live another 25 years, you know, that's real. That's thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. So the question is, can you go without 150 extra, uh, you know, basically without this money for two years? If you can, you should, because you're going to leave thousands of dollars on the table. Now, if you guys are at the, you know, basically you're about to eat ramen noodles. Well, yeah, file, my goodness. <laughs> Take your benefit right now so you don't have to get eat ramen noodles. But there's a lot of thought process that needs to go in here. It's more, it's by far more than just a rule of thumb. You got to look at your specific cir circumstance for sure. All right. So let's wrap this up. So a couple of things. Remember, spousal benefit. If you are married today and your spouse has a primary insurance amount of X, your benefit will be, re will be half, at most half of his or her primary insurance amount. It will not be more. It could be less. If you, are, if you are at full retirement age and you have not filed for your spousal benefits, you are wrong. You need to. Now, they might say at Social Security, well, you're already making more on your own record than your spousal benefits would be. Well, OK, no harm, no foul. But they might say, oh, your spousal benefit will increase your benefit by an extra 200 bucks a month. I've seen that happen a million times. Either way, when you hit your full retirement age, and again, 66 for those born before 1955, it's 67 for those born after 1960. If you hit your full retirement age and haven't gone to, or at least called Social Security to ask about your spousal benefit, you're mistaken. You need to just find out. And again, the worst case scenario is they're going to say, no, you're already making more than your spousal benefit would be. There's a good chance, though, because I've seen it happen a bunch where they'll say, oh, yeah, that'll give you an extra three or you know, a couple hundred bucks a month. That's real money, folks. And it's your money. It's your money. You pay the taxes for it. So get it. Hope this helps. So try, and then uh, don't forget divorce. We'll talk about divorces in a different video here as well. All right. So think about that. Have you ever thought about your spousal benefit? What if you take your spousal benefit earlier? Is that a mistake? Well, I don't know. That's where cash flow needs to be uh, analyzed. Cash flow is always king. Cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. But look into it for sure. Worst case scenario is that you call Social Security and they say, yeah, it's not going to help you. No, that's fine. But look into it, my friends, because it's critically important. And remember, this decision you make is going to affect you for the rest of your life. Sorry, I just bumped the mic there. <laughs> so don't take it lightly. All right. As always, if this has been helpful, thumbs up, man, thumbs up. I really could use a thumbs up to promote the, the channel that we have here. Don't forget to comment below. I'd love to hear your comments on your own experience with Social Security, either through you or through your parents, whatever it is. What's, uh, you know, what's your take? And certainly hit subscribe. I got to keep doing that. Subscribe's on that bottom there, and you'll see the little red thing that says subscribe. And always hit the notification bell to be notified on future content. Hey, I look forward to seeing you next time at the Heritage Wealth Planning uh, yeah, YouTube channel. Happy St. Patrick's Day.